I'm a Muslim man Shut up Gotta stay clean when I'm on my dean I'm a Muslim man hey. Make them say I mean, I mean, I mean I'm a Muslim man yeah. Heaven is a dream when you're on my team I'm a Muslim man Yeah, Akhi, I'm a Muslim man Shut up I'm What up, Jim Nation? And welcome to Ab Nation TV I'm your boy, Ab Yes, I know I'm vlogging. I'm vlogging. I know, but guess what? Um, I know the background. Forget the background. Don't worry about the background because you know your boy's doing the big thing. You know what I'm saying? Big thing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, right now I'm I am going to an art museum, museum, museum because of one of my best friend that I, her and I go to same school. Graduate the same year, graduate the same school, same class, everything. So basically, she's my best friend. She's my best friend, right? And there's some honor that's had to do with her. But one thing I cannot do is show her face. That's a problem. I cannot show her the face. I don't know. I know why. Like, I know. She's more famous than me. And, like, obviously people are going to see her, but she didn't want me to record. Does it make sense to you guys? Does it make sense to you guys? I know, right? I'm just like scratching my head like, huh? Huh? What? <laughs> so, that's, <coughs> that's why. And yes, I have been sick for a while. But Alhamdulillah, I'm back at the, you know, YouTube. Oh, for, for lately, I have been uploading like videos for React videos on Ab Nation reacts on the description below if you guys want to see it so i think the audio something is like low or good clear i don't know i'm still working on this what's called road road something the the, the audio is covered with the uh, dead cat you know what i'm saying so yeah your boy's doing a big thing you know what i'm saying a big thing big thing so yeah and I'm trying to make an audio just for my voice instead of like if you guys heard some hissing thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. So I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, so I'll see you guys soon in the next. Whoop! What up, Gym Nation? And I'm back again. And yeah, I'm headed to to the art uh, Minneapolis art situation. I I forgot what the name is called, but I'm with my mom right here and my uncle's inside the back seat so we're heading to my friend honor let's just say that <laughs> so what do you think mom how, how, how are you feeling i cannot wait to see don't say the name don't say it's funny it's funny how it's funny how no, she i said i'm not i cannot wait to see it oh okay but it's funny how she don't want me to say the name or show her face, but she's already famous. Mm -hmm. Does it make any sense? She's famous. She's famous. Then why is she covering? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Seriously, okay. I don't know why. But this is about to get crazy. I know. Obviously, we're going to be late. And I hate it. I'm not, I don't, I don't like being late. That's not so my thing. On the 6th Street? The, 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 next, the next two lights, I know. No, it's not two lights, only one light. The smallest street is 25th, so. I believe. <laughs> my mom is too much. No, no, no. My mom is too oh, much. I, I know that light is, I don't know. I think they don't have 25th. It is 26th, 24th, yes, and 26th. They do have 25th there. They have 25th. So basically, we're going to 26th Street. <laughs> 26th Street. So, why can't it be that smart? No, if the bullets cut on me. Look, you're going shortcut. Shortcut. Shortcut? Yeah. So, my mom and I, we've been arguing so bad like like go this way no no i'm going this way no go this way no i'm going this way go this way no i'm going this way 
Help me, guys. Okay, I have to go. Yes, yes, coming this way. Yeah, you saving oh, time. Oh shoot! <laughs> so right now, I'll see you guys in the event. Okay, uh, we're not actually late. Well, maybe I, I'm not so sure about it, but we are here. We arrived. It's kind of look like a college to me, so yeah. <laughs> Mom. Yeah, we're not late, yeah. We're not late? No, we're not. Are you sure that's, about that? Well, that's what you told me. I'm not sure about that. Okay. I ain't say anything. Yep. But do you know she's not here? <laughs> she's not here. Who's not here? The the person that... No, she's over there. <laughs> she's not in here, here. She's on her way. <laughs> you must be kidding me. Wallahi. Wallahi. So... The appointment is 6 o'clock, <coughs> but you no, said no. 5 o'clock. Well, she told me 5 o'clock. Anyway, because she knows Somali people, they are late. When you tell 5 o'clock, they come. Oh, they stop. But it's stop. over the 6, like 6, Stop. Anyway, stop, stop. It's over the 6, 12. <laughs> to engage with um, other community groups uh, there. And so over the course of her three-month-long residency, Nisenbaum worked closely with these groups in Phillips and Whittier, including Central Tyrone Guzman, Hope Community, and Mia's own security guards to create three large-scale portraits, each representing their respective communities. Through face-to-face -face portrait sessions, the artist bonded with her sitters, building a relationship of friendship and mutual trust. Uh, in conjunction with the exhibition, Mia has invited a number of prominent arts and community leaders to join us tonight to explore the powerful role that art can play in community building. Uh, aimed at fostering cohesion between those living in the Phillips and Whittier neighborhoods and art institutions such as Mia, tonight's talk will highlight several successful models that inspire, inspire public engagement with the arts. I should also say, as part of the exhibition, um, the gallery space will be given over uh, and will sort of serve as a venue for dialogue and community exchange during the exhibition run. Uh, and it will be sort of function as a flexible space for programming that will be driven by community members. Um, and the speakers that are, are we're joined by tonight have also been tasked with helping us program the space. And it is also, I should say, open to all of you. Um, there is an email address and we will be uh, available via Facebook as well. Um, and you can reach out to staff here, and it is really an open kind of flexible space. And the show, in the end, does not kind of fulfill its promise until um, the community and our neighbors sort of engage with the space. Um, I would also like to, to acknowledge, uh, before we begin tonight's gathering, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this event is taking place, the communities who walk these lands, music and organizing. He was awarded a Bush Fellowship in 2013 to focus on the intersection of uh, the intersection of organizing, culture, art, and media, specifically related to building the power and voice of communities and youth of color, and sits on the board of Intermedia Arts in Voices for Racial Justice. On my left, we are joined by Deanna Cummings. She serves as the Chief Executive Officer of Juxtaposition Arts an urban youth-focused visual arts center that emerged in 1995. Located in North Minneapolis, Juxtaposition Arts' vision is to develop community by engaging and employing young urban artists in hands-on education initiatives that create pathways to self-sufficiency while actualizing creative power. In addition to her extensive professional fashion design and screen printing studio, uh, cut and sew, um, uh, and wearables uh, get made by young people, tote bags, uh, t-shirts, etc. We sell them in our retail storefront as well as online. 
This is Environmental Design Studio, which is concerned with architectural and landscape architecture. Kids do everything from design uh, bike racks to large scale public art sculptures. Sometimes we win awards. And then our tactical studio, which is uh, interested in uh, meeting people where they are and activating space um, that provides uh, everyday people the opportunity to influence decisions that are being made in their community. So really making a community meeting or a setting um, where uh, folks are trying to get information about a decision that they're trying to make accessible to people where they are. More tactical photos. And then some photos of um, work we do that's about connecting with our nearby neighbors. Um, in addition to work for clients, we do work um, that's about strengthening the fiber of our neighborhood. And some of the things are super low tech and um, uh, people oriented, like blowing bubbles off the roof of our building um, in order to create uh, 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 some space of joy and respite and, and you know, just like chill. The impact we are after is about impacting people, impacting the place, and also impacting the sector. We've really come to recognize that um, work that is solely focused on fixing young people, which is, which is what a lot of youth development work is about, like if we just make the young people better, stronger, faster, smarter, all will be right with the world. Um, after 20 years of doing the work, we recognize that that is in fact not true. Um, if you equip young people um, with the skills and experiences and connections that make them better, stronger, and faster, and they bump up against institutional and systemic barriers once they leave a program like Juxtaposition Arts, then we feel like we haven't done enough. So our work today um, really is focusing equally on people, place, and sector um, as a pathway toward a maximum impact. These are Gordon Coons and Francis Yellow. They're at Anishinaabe Academy. We had 40 youth this spring, and they have about 60 youth lined up for Indigenous People Day October 9th, and then another school, Northeast Middle School, is going to bring 30 or 40. So she, we should have just 100 youth just from schools alone. Uh, lower students bring in like 20. But the project here was uh, it's kind of like subversive tactics to teach, uh, to educate youth. Um, this one's about clan animals. So they just painted the, the spirit of the clan animal. Uh, long story short, our responsibilities, our symbiotic responsibilities, I guess, we protect animals in the physical world and in turn they protect us. Um, but it's a very interesting space that combines uh, activism and an art project as well and it's brought in people from the community at, at Corona Queen. So I'd be painting, it's a longish space, I'd be painting in the front part of the, of the community space and in the back would be um, OSHA classes and DACA classes. Um, so it was the first time that I painted in such a public space. Uh, and it was some engagement through with kids that would come in and, and be a combination of art classes and painting, seeing the painting as it progressed uh, in this space. Then um, there was one family who I got very close to who I'd been painting for the past, uh, for the past five years, uh, Marisa, Veronica, and Gustavo. Um, I've seen Marisa grow from the age of 10 to 15. Um, she's a, I've seen her become a young woman. And it's very interesting, I think, the space that you enter into when you paint someone. And I, I feel like it's a space where that requires mutuality and trust on both sitter and artist, obviously. So while I was painting Gustavo, who's my same age, roughly, he's been in the United States for about 20 years. Um, he was telling me all the stories about uh, the money he sent back to Mexico in the form of a businesses and how he's a landowner in Mexico and owns a horse and what it feels like to run, to have the air go through your, you know, your hair while you're riding a horse. And, you know, I was like, how long has it been since you've been in this land? And it's been 20 years. But just the kind of space that you enter into in that dialogue with painting was very interesting to me. Um, and there's been various ways in which my sitters and I get engaged with each other's lives over, over this long time. So here's 
uh, Veronica's house with the first painting I made of her hanging in her, in her uh, room, in her living room, along with art made by Maisa, her daughter. And the first painting I made of her, the, of her family, that's a large scale painted, painting. I started it um, in 2014 and I came back to it a year later and Maisa had grown quite a bit so I painted her upside down, which was the way she was posing. And I, and I think of the, oftentimes uh, when I was painting this community, which was mostly Latino, um, I would ask them what they would like to watch or listen to while I was painting them and oftentimes it would be a sim um, telenovela that they would ask for that's called the Rosa de Guadalupe that follows a sim uh, similar narrative. Things go wrong and people play, pray to the Virgin and she makes things right. And I think about it in terms of a metaphor for what painting can do. You know, small miracles, um, small moments of redemption, I guess, in, in terms of the conversations I have with the person while they're in front of me. And I, I also think in this painting, um, obviously I pay my sitters by the hour, but I try to think about different economies that exceed the way we um, instrumentalize uh, time and, and exploit, especially th this population who was, who was undocumented immigrants. So I think about different economies such as those of neutrality and care and how we can escape this like monetizing time. You know, obviously there's, there's a monetary exchange, but something that might, ex might, might exceed those economies as well. Um, so this is the family, uh, Marisa, Gustavo, and Veronica, joining me in my first open air white cons in 2014. Uh, Veronica went on to become a community leader herself. She led a group of women on a radical bicycling uh, group, uh, about 15 women that would build their own bikes and bike around the city. And this is the first place where I showed the work was at Immigrant Movement International and then Later on at White Cons, the work was shown as well. Uh, this is the family joining me again last year at, what, at the Whitney Biennial, where uh, Veronica and I led a, a group of youth. Um, it was actually on my birthday, and it was really an amazing celebration. And, and uh, Veronica talked to a group of youth about, about what it means to follow their dreams. Just recently, she got to speak to the mayor of New York um, because he ended up putting in an extra bike path in Corona for, for bike safety, thanks to her advocacy. I grew up in Mexico City myself. My family were uh, Russian immigrants that came to Mexico fleeing the pogroms, so they arrived before the Second World War. And so this is a mural by Siqueiros on the left um, of you know, a mass of individuals, but not really, you can't tell the individual faces. So I've been, I've been influenced by, or the personalities, the individual character of each, of each person in this massive mural. I've been influenced by people like Alice Neal, who was working in the, in the 40s in New York. This is Spanish family that she made in Harlem. So thinking about how one can think about the individual within um, this kind of mass move of, of social history. This is a group portrait by the artist Sylvia Slay from 1977. Um, it's called the Air Feminist Reading Group, and this is a group of uh, painting that I did influenced by that work that was hanging in the Whitney Biennial last year, and it's a group of women that work in public office, so there were 15 women I met through a fellowship through the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, and they, they all work in NGOs and are incredibly powerful women, uh, lawyers. And I depicted them with a background by Rafael uh, Benes, um, that's a, a print from the 1950s of a group of women marching in solidarity towards the union um, office. And then uh, there I am uh, on the bottom looking over at them. So my, my paintings are oftentimes made through a system of or montage. You know, the, the background is oftentimes tiles or, or points to the craft tradition where my sitters come from. Uh, in this case, Talavera from Puebla. Um, and then the contingent situation in which we find ourselves, the newspaper. 
um, Vero Veronica and Marisa and Gustavo run in a group of um, uh, people that run in marathons and they printed their own t-shirts that are that say Latin Runners Club on them. So I think of the relationship between the public and private sphere as well and thinking about the private sphere as a place where um, the government obviously might try to intrude but thinking about that space of interiority and privacy and the relationship between private and public when these uh, people come into group formation. These are uh, uh, another group of self-portraits, uh, uh, not self-portraits, another portraits in a way of a person who was in a correctional institution for two years and I made a portrait of her thinking about her place of confinement and my uh, transcribing the letters she would send me. So the, the, the still life on the right is two letters of correspondence from an inmate and then the one on the, on the left is a uh, mask, satirical mask that I found in a market in Mexico City, um, a chapel and Bush and Castro mixed in with a lottery game. Um, this is uh, a still life I made of Veronica's t-shirt. After, after so much time of painting her, I just, from our growing friendship, I can't paint her anymore, so I painted her t-shirt mixed with a Meharan print and these are the paintings hanging in this gallery back here. Um, the first people I met at the museum, the, the security guards themselves, I met Kath, who just left. Uh, but she was talking to somebody at, in front of an Alice Neal painting, and I thought this is where I should start in thinking about the history of institutional critique, how one, if one wants to depict another, to, to reflect on oneself as well. So. Uh, in the, at the basement of, the, of this museum, um, the guards form at 9.45 in the morning for morning meetings, and they have a wall called the Pet Wall, which is indicated of all of them with their pets. <laughs> and then this is a group of wise elders who are some of them sitting in the audience uh, from Centro. And at Centro, it's incredible how they have murals uh, decorating the whole space. Um, this one is, was a mural chronicling the history of farm labor to Minnesota. And, and I taught a portraiture class there, and so um, these are the portraits that they made of each other. And lastly, a uh, group of women, some of who are here, Nemo and Sumaya, um, uh, at Hope Community Garden, which is a teaching garden, and Nemo made this poster in both English, uh, Somali, and Spanish. Um, so, I was very inspired by visiting Alyssa and, and joining them at, at the uh, community garden and seeing the incredible work they make there. So um, the, the space, what I'm most excited about this exhibition is how there's also a video chronicling the, um, the work we did this summer and how the space will be given over to, commu to community engagement and for people to make use of it, as I mentioned earlier. Thank you so much. One thing I was uh, struck by hearing you all speak was how the, the, the idea of engagement is defined in so many different ways. Uh, I was hearing dignity and respect and leadership. Uh, I was hearing resistance and, and subversiveness. I was hearing um, entrepreneurship. Okay, yes, I know that was a short, 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 short video and I know I am so... <coughs> Yeah, I am so sorry, and yes, Megan and I, you know, cut my hair, I know, I know, don't ask me why, but anyways, um, okay, you saw the videos, yes, you saw what people show on the video, and, but there was one main thing, one main thing that you saw, the last, last thing, if you guys should notice, probably based on the thumbnails, that's what I want to show you. If it doesn't entertain you, I am sorry. I just did it for her. Like to be honest, I just did it for her. I record. I just record for her, like for her, my best friend. <coughs> I, I want to sit first. <laughs> and her, uh, her and I are my. Uh, we are best friends since high school.
and I just want to be like I just want like to be proud of her what she's doing that she's helping the community alhamdulillah like mashallah like I have a friend like that who like is very down to the earth so <laughs> I know I'm sorry much <laughs> I can't say her name I can't say her name my goal hurts <laughs> I know right it's just so funny she's already famous it's uh, this painting is already on the wall, pe- uh, like on top of people are gonna see her, but she don't want me to say her name on YouTube. What kind of supporters is she? Hmm. What kind of Dream Nation is she? <laughs> yeah. If you guys still are new to this channel, Dream Nation is a a title for a fan who's dream and that catching their dream, like searching their dream, and fighting for their dream. To make it as a true, like, dream come true. So, I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. And I just want to say, thank you for watching this video. Please like button, subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next time on App Nation TV.